Endowed with that faith, he seeks the propitiation of such a one, and from him he obtains his desires, the benefits being decreed by me alone. When one has this faith towards whatever devta God he worships, then one makes efforts to gain adoration from such a devta God, and from such a devta his wishes become complete. However, the wishes and desires are completed because the supreme soul makes them complete. Therefore, these desires are attained through somebody and via somebody. A person puts his wish in front of a devta, a, a god, and performs bhakti. God sees that he is performing bhakti and that his qualities described in the last verse are being developed. Then such a person's wishes come true. God makes these wishes come true and God gives the fruits. But the fruits come first through the devta, the god, and the person thinks that his wish has come true because of his worship for this particular devta, god. Ultimately, if we look at it spiritually and very rationally, then the god described here is a system. God is a system of this universe. When you ask for something from the system, then you will get it. If I were to give you a simple example, then there are many post offices. So if you need a post card worth, let's say, 50p, then whether you go to the Barbican post office or the Oxford Street post office, then you just go to the person at the service counter at the post office and then ask the person to give you a postcard. The person at the counter immediately picks up the postcard and gives it to you. You think that this person gave you the postcard from his window at this time, but ultimately, where did it come from? It was initially printed by the government press and there is a grand distribution system from which the postcards reached everywhere. We think that the people at the service counter gave them to us. This is because we went to them. At the time, we take the postcard for the person at the service counter, then we do not know that it has come from the government press. We do not even think about it. In the same way, God says that every person goes to his personal devta, God, and the desires are fulfilled because they have given the 50p for the postcard by performing that much bhakti devotion and that much upasana penances. Therefore, their wishes definitely come true. But at that time, the person thinks that the devta, the god, has given it to him. At that time, people forget that there is a system in the world and the supreme energy which is performing all of these jobs. Shri Krishna here is speaking as a representative of the supreme energy and from the place of the supreme energy. Human beings forget this truth of God and remain stuck with these forms. A person can only be liberated when one goes beyond all these forms and connects directly with the supreme truth. This is because while one sees forms, then when one gets pleasures, then he is grateful towards the form, and when one gets pains, then he thinks that the form gave it to him, and therefore he has hatred towards that form. But this form does not give us pleasures or pains, this is just a grand system in the world. And this system works very beautifully. When a human being understands this in his mind, then he has no complaints in life. Then whatever pleasures come or pains come, then he does not begin dancing in pleasures and does not begin crying in pains. He understands that the system is doing its job and the system does its job not randomly like the thoughts that come to his mind, but that system is doing its job according to him. Whatever he does, the same thing will come back to him. Therefore, the person immediately turns towards himself, improves his life, and because he improves his own life, he has to come out of the system. Shri Krishna says in this verse that he certainly gives a devotee what the devotee wants. Sridhar Swami wrote very nicely in his commentary, Sarva api revatam mama eva murtiyaha tadara dhanam api vastuhaha mama dhanam eva tatat falatata picha aham eva. All these gods are idol of me, of the supreme energy. The supreme energy is saying this. All these gods are idols of me. When you adore these different forms, then factually this is an adoration of me. These different givers of fruits are also me. Whatever idols there are, the consciousness residing in all idols is one. It's Christmas round the corner. When Santa Claus comes in many different forms, then a child just thinks that Santa Claus gives him these presents. In reality, the parents give the child those presents. A week before, they know what to get because the child keeps asking that he wants this and that. The parents know what the child wants. The child is so innocent 
that on a night, night of 24th of December, it leaves the stocking by the window and goes to sleep. The child thinks that Santa Claus will come and give him these toys. The child is performing worship for Santa Claus, yet the parents give him these presents. In the same way, we may be doing penances for different Santa Clauses, but ultimately, it is the ultimate father who is giving us everything. When a child reaches a certain age, then the child understands. I once read the following nice quote. When a child is young, then the child waits for Santa Claus. When the child turns 15, then he forgets Santa Claus. When he turns 30, he acts like Santa Claus. And when he turns 60, then he looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> These are different, the different stages in a man's life. As a man passes through these different stages, the root remains one. God says that when a, the devotee's wishes come true, then this happens because God makes them come true. They come from God. God is the one residing in these different forms. Who's heard of Rabindranath Tagore? The famous, famous Nobel Prize winning great poet of India. Rabindranath Tagore wrote about a beautiful event in his reminiscences. He said that he used to write poems, these poems were printed, and people would praise his poems, and he used to feel good about this. But his neighbour would never praise his poems. Not only would his neighbour not <coughs> praise his poems, but when he would go to show them to his neighbour, then his neighbour would find something missing in those poems. Rabindranath Tagore wrote that he would ask his neighbour what was missing in the poems, which word was wrong, or whether the rhyming was wrong, and yet this neighbour would not say anything. His neighbour would just tell him to improve it in his way. When Rabindranath Tagore would go and show these poems to his neighbour, then his neighbour would look at him in such a way that he did not even feel like showing his neighbour his poems because he understood that his neighbour was still not happy. If Rabindranath Tagore's poems were printed in a magazine or in a newspaper, then as Rabindranath Tagore would be going outside his room, then he would see his neighbour sitting in a compound reading the magazine. He would see that his neighbour has read his poem but his neighbour would look at him in the way as if something was missing. Everybody would praise Rabindranath Tagore for his poems, but his neighbour would just give him the same look. Rabindranath Tagore then took this as a challenge that his neighbour would have to say that his poem was not nice, and only when his neighbour says that the poem is nice, then that poem is right. Rabindranath Tagore writes that his neighbour never told him that he liked his poems to the extent that when Rabindranath Tagore was given the Nobel Prize for Gitanjali and the whole world praised him, but his neighbour did not. Rabindranath Tagore said that he had grown old and he went to walk on the beach one rainy evening. In the beach, there were holes in the sand in which the rain was falling and therefore they were being filled with water. The sun was shining lightly and had an orangey red colour because it was evening. Rabindranath Tagore saw the reflections of the sun in different colours in the, these holes in the sand. He was looking at how nice the reflections were and that they were all in the holes. Suddenly, when his gaze turned upwards, then he saw that the sun was one and it had many different reflections. The experience that he had at that moment was that all of these are reflections of Brahman and the truth of Brahman is one. He wrote his realisation at that moment in a poem. The bliss he had while writing about this realization in this poem was greater than the bliss he had while writing the Nobel Prize winning Gitanjali. And yet, he thought that he had not been able to express what he had felt. He was filled with bliss and he thought that this poem was great. He took it and went running to his neighbor. Rabindranath Tagore had grown so old and yet he still ran with a paper with a poem in his hand. As soon as he went to his neighbor, the neighbor said, that he did not need to read it because this poem of his was great. Rabindranath Tagore asked his neighbour how he knew. The neighbour said, I know from the look on your face that you have attained something. This is because the bliss that is radiating from your heart had not been seen when you were bringing the poems you had been up until now. Then it looked as if you had come to show me something and that you had come with egotism and pride. But now, you have come, when you have come to me with this poem, the feeling on your face is completely different because you have attained the supreme truth. Rabindranath Tagore writes that if someone had given him the greatest praise of all in his life, then it is what his neighbour said at that moment. Praise without even reading the poem must be such a great praise. 
His neighbor did not need to read the poem that was written by him on the paper because he could read the poem that was written on his face. This is because Rabindranath Tagore had attained something. One should attain the abstract supreme wisdom that resides in different forms. Verse 23.